As I think you might know, I own a farm. It's not two hours from Sydney. Friends ring and they finish up talking to themselves. Sometimes you've got to make four separate calls to finish one phone call. Farmers take their mobile with them because if there's an accident, the mobile is their one hope of securing help. But places only a couple of hours out of Sydney have no mobile connection. And this is true all over Australia. You may not know, but there's a thing called a universal service obligation. On the government's own website, it says, quote, Telstra is responsible for delivering the USO and must provide standard telephone services on request to every premise in Australia within reasonable time frames, unquote. This is both a legislative and contractual obligation. But Telstra not asked to do this for nothing. On my most recent figures, Telstra were getting $297 million over 20 years. $100 million of that is your money. $18 million of it is paid by Vodafone, but they have no access to the Telstra infrastructure. Who asks Telstra to demonstrate where the money is being spent? Well, Julian Lisa, I have said before, is a pretty smart cookie. He's the federal Liberal MP for the northern Sydney seat of Barara. It's 40 kilometres from the centre of Sydney, a 40-minute drive. It's not whoop whoop. The mobile phone coverage is rubbish. He's been on about this for over a year. In the federal parliament last May, he said, and I quote, for four years, I've been foolish enough to believe Telstra when they say they'll fix things. But I say to Andy Penn, the CEO of Telstra, you never fix the fundamentals. Telstra has a huge responsibility with their legacy, market advantage. So if they don't discharge their responsibilities properly, they should be forced to share their infrastructure so consumers have some hope of getting the service they need. He says, I say enough is enough, do better Telstra. When I last spoke on this program to Julian, signs were going up all around his electorate. Residents were asking Julian if they could have a sign in their yard which says, this mobile black spot spot brought to you by Telstra. They're sick of the poor coverage. More than a 1,000 residents had signed a petition. Julian Lees has been in touch with me with further disturbing stories. Listen to this. Last year, I was contacted by a woman, this is Julian, by a woman who called an ambulance when her husband started experiencing chest pain. When the ambulance arrived, the defibrillator could not communicate with the cardiologists to send and receive instructions because it relied on a mobile signal. Paramedics were running back and forth from the house to the street to try to get reception. The patient tragically died. Well, MPs have struck from all over the country, 17 of them, federal, have come together to support a private member's bill which would see telecommunication companies made accountable for service in both metropolitan and regional areas. This follows years of inaction by telcos to fix fundamental issues in Julian Lisa's election. But as I said, this is Australia-wide. Julian joins me. Oh, Julian, we've been on this track many times before. We I mean, I, <laughs> I have to make four phone calls to get a message across, and that's even if you can get reception. Nothing's improved since you and I last spoke. No, and that's very much why we've decided to take this legislative option. Uh, together with 16 of my colleagues, we're putting forward a private member's bill. Uh, we've put it forward as an exposure draft so people can give us their feedback before we put it into the parliament and people can go online to telcoreform.com.au and uh, make their comments on the bill and tell us their own stories. But this mm. bill is designed to do three things. Uh, it's designed to give us better infrastructure, it's designed to force better customer service on the telcos and it's designed to force better accountabilities on those telcos. Telecommunications is a fundamental service that Australians rely on, but in many respects we had better telco 20 years ago when we all had landlines because at least you could make a call from inside your house. There are so many premises today, including in my electorate and right across the country, where Telstra and the other telcos will say there's coverage, but there's only coverage if you stand at the back paddock or on the dog kennel and the wind's blowing in the right direction. That's not coverage in anyone's language. There needs to be a universal service obligation for mobile phones so that people can actually make calls in their house or in their business like we used to be able to when everyone had landlines. So that's the better infrastructure component. The second component is about better customer service. Uh, telcos are very focused on their share prices, uh, as large, you know, uh, large publicly listed companies are. But there's no real driver for customer service. And we hear so many stories across the country of appalling customer service. That's why we've taken the model of the banking executive accountability regime and applying it to telcos. What does that actually mean? It means that there won't be any bonuses for telco executives unless they can demonstrate substantial improvements in customer service. It means no one should be sitting online waiting for a telco to, to, uh, to answer their call for more than five minutes. We're constantly getting stories of 40 minutes and an hour or 
It means that when you are interrupted in the middle of a business day for six hours or more in any one month, you shouldn't have to pay your bill for that month because presently there just aren't the drivers for the telcos to fix this. We also want to see better disclosure from the telcos of the complaints that they're getting. So we're going to force telcos in their annual reports um, to list the number of complaints they get, the time that it takes to resolve them, whereabouts the Just interrupting the you there, Justin. Just interrupting you there. Why can't that be on their website every month instead of waiting for an annual report? I mean, you're talking about practical problems. We're in homeschooling. I know a comment you made that kids studying for the HSC can't connect with their teachers. And are you serious? The teachers are teaching from the McDonald's car park because they can't get reception at home. That is exactly right. I mean, we've got schools in my electorate where effectively the photocopiers have been working in overdrive because there's no reliable internet and there's no reliable phone reception. Um, I was speaking to somebody this morning mm. who's conducting their entire business from the front seat of their car because they can't Dreadful. get reception in their home. Just, and this is just metropolitan be, Sydney. Mm. Just ch tidy this up here. What is the status of this bill? When do you think it'll get before the parliament? And when do you think it'll be law? And why hasn't every politician signed it? So this bill is an exposure draft. What that means is that uh, we've, we've put the bill out in the form that it might be introduced into Parliament, but as good public policy making, we want to get feedback on it first. We want to see that we've got the measures right and that people think we're on the right track. Uh, we'll then make any adjustments we might want to make and then put it before the Parliament. Um, my colleagues um, have joined me on this because whether they're Liberal or National, whether they live in Sydney, Melbourne, Perth or the Outer Bar Coup, um, they are experiencing the same sort of issues that mm, uh, absolutely. they're experiencing. Abs absolutely. Well, look, Julian, you keep in touch. I know I get letters, you get letters and emails. This is a national, nationwide issue. Um, it's a very, very important mission that you're on. I thank you and congratulate you on behalf of people who are watching you here tonight. Keep in touch. Thanks, Alan.